This is episode number one of the Online Playmaker Sessions. This week's episode is with my good friends from Frisco, Texas, top-earning affiliate marketers, speakers, and trainers, Bill and Michelle Pescosolito. Welcome to the Online Playmaker Sessions. This is the place for the latest What's Working Now strategies from the best online playmakers, the top marketers, the rising stars, who are making it happen right now. Every week, you'll get real, actionable lessons that you can take and apply immediately in your business, delivered in short 20-minute sessions. Our focus is your results. Here's your host, entrepreneur, world-class trainer, and marketing strategist, Norbert Orlowitz. Hello, online playmakers. If this is your first time tuning in to the Playmaker Sessions, thank you for choosing us, and don't forget to subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, and if you prefer video, our YouTube channel at onlineprofitplaybook.tv. As with all of our episodes, we have all the show notes, transcripts, and actionable tips over on the blog. Just head over to www.onlineprofitplaybook.com. You'll also be able to get access to my complimentary five-video tutorial series on building the proper foundation for your online business, as well as several other free trainings, including my Instant Income Multiplier tutorial. And if you're ready to multiply your results fast, check out the premium membership of our online profit playbook, where our guests open up their closely guarded playbooks and walk you step-by-step through the exact marketing funnels and sales process they use to build their audience, grow their influence, and make sales. Get the coveted online profit playbook today. Just head over to onlineprofitplaybook.com and join the playmakers. Now on to this week's episode. Michelle and Bill Pescasolito got their start online back in 2009 as so many others with absolutely zero knowledge and experience about this industry. After dedicating herself to mastering Facebook advertising, Michelle was able to quickly create results and build a six-figure income in her first six months marketing on Facebook. She quickly became recognized as the Facebook marketing queen and is now a go-to expert in the industry when it comes to advertising on Facebook. Bill Pescasolito balances off the partnership with his expertise in communication, copywriting, and sales, and has established himself as a leading expert in creating compelling copy and maximizing sales conversions. Bill and Michelle are extremely successful super affiliates and are top earners in several different affiliate income programs and have earned well over $1 million in affiliate commissions alone. Bill and Michelle are committed to helping entrepreneurs around the world achieve success through their incredible digital training courses, coaching programs, speaking, and live events. Our inaugural online playmakers, Bill and Michelle Pescasolito. All right, welcome back everyone. It's Norbert Orlowitz here and today I've got a couple of very special guests and I'm really excited because this is actually uh, the first podcast episode and I, it's, it's awesome that we get to start with my great friends, uh, business partners, top affiliates, top producers and just all around incredible people, Bill and Michelle Pescasolito. How are you guys doing today? We're good. We're doing awesome. Thank you for having us on. Absolutely. Awesome. Yeah, I'm really, I'm really, really excited. You know, when I was, I was picking my, my sort of first group to get started. Um, obviously, you guys were, were the first choice. I'm like, okay, but we got to start out with, uh, with Bill and Michelle. Now, you guys, um, you've been online marketing and you've been in the home-based business industry for quite a bit of time. And for all the people that don't know your story, we're going to share a link to your blog post and about you so they can get to know you a little bit more. But with these podcast sessions, we want to get right into the content, uh, right into the juicy details here so people get a lot of value in the 20 minutes that they uh, that they spend with us. So, Bill, Michelle, we're going to jump right into it. Now, a lot of our audience um, is looking to get more out of their online business. Okay, they, already, they typically will have an existing business or they're just getting started. And I, I know it's going to be a few years back now. We've got to go a few years back to when you guys were getting started and when you guys were still struggling to create results like so many online marketers are. So I want you to think back, you know, go back a few years, think back, and try to think back to some of the big breakthroughs that happened that took you from struggling to generate leads, to get traffic, to build your business online, to finally 
you know, having that breakthrough and all of a sudden the leads are coming in and the sales are coming in. What were some of the big breakthroughs that happened for you guys? That's a great question, Norbert. And I think I'll speak for myself, but I think it applies to both Michelle and myself. The, for, for me, the biggest breakthrough, because I was, I was the guy that was on the phone calling all of our leads. And my big, my big switch, the light bulb moment, and, and when really the results started to pour in was when I realized that this is all about providing value and trying to help people out. So when I first started calling leads, I came from a real hardcore, you know, previous hardcore sales mindset and sales mode, where it was just, you know, sell, 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 a very competitive environment and, you know, quotas and, you know, you had to sell to keep your job because I was in corporate America. And I carried that into calling our leads. And, but it was once I really realized that when I called a lead and, and had no preset agenda, had no predetermined outcome in my own mind, I literally just called them to see how I could help them out. And I tried to provide value and provide a solution. Now, fortunately, we had a multi-tier business model. We had different income streams. So I had a handful of different possible solutions that I could provide them. Uh, so it wasn't just we had one biz op and I was just trying to hammer this biz op down their throat regardless of what they were saying or what they were doing. I literally looked at it as that I've got an onion here. I've got to peel away the layers of the onion, find out what their pain is, you know, have some open-ended questions, some exploratory questions, and I really played a role more of a consultant rather than a salesperson. And it made the whole process easier. I think it made the conversations easier. I, I got you know much greater results and better results because I focused on them and, and how I could help them out. That's awesome. And, and you, you touch on a couple of really good points there. One is the listening aspect, the consult consultative aspect where you're focusing on their problems. And the second you touched on there was having a monetization strategy where you've got different things to offer them so that depending on their situation, their personal circumstances, um, you're able to give them a solution and and profit from that as well. So you guys always had that in your business from the beginning, is that right? Yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, when he talks about the phone aspect of it, you know, what's great about us is we do different things in our business and I was focusing on the marketing and it's very similar to what he's saying. You know, it's that shift was when I really focused on providing value and that I understood my customer avatar, who was I speaking to, I had to understand their pains and their struggles for me to be able to create that perfect offer. So if it's a Facebook cheat sheet I'm giving away, I understood that the audience I was targeting were people who were struggling to build their businesses online using Facebook. So once you know, I realized that it's value you've got to really give people in the beginning, especially when it comes to social media. People are very smart out there. They're getting bombarded with marketing messages as it is. So providing value is what you really have to do to hook them in and get them to raise their hand to get on your list. So you guys both mentioned that, this whole concept of providing value. And it's something that we've taught you know, ever since we founded MLSP uh, in 2008. We've been focusing on this concept of attraction marketing. Mm -hmm. And maybe we should touch on that just a little bit because I think there's still a lot of marketers that are coming into the field right now. Um, that don't quite get it. Yeah. So mm -hmm. attraction marketing, if you could summarize that for the new people out there just so they really get this whole concept of what it means to be providing value. Yeah, I mean, for me, it's it's like I said, I mean, you've got to understand your customer avatar. What is their pain? You know, and once you know their pain, you can offer a solution to that. See, people get it backwards, I think, when you say they don't quite understand attraction marketing. They already represent a network marketing company, let's say. They've got their wealth, health and wellness shakes, and they go out there and they blast their health and wellness shakes to everybody thinking, I'm going to attract people. But you're not going to attract people because what you're doing is you're throwing out a fishing line and you're hoping to catch a fish. It doesn't work that way. You've got to actually go out there and cast out value to a targeted audience that you understand their pain first. So that could be just a you know a health report that you're offering those people. Get them to in first. Get them and you know allow them to get to know you, like you, and trust you. Then you can present your products as a solution. I think also you know what you need to do is with your you need to create content 
And with that, you need to address what are their high stakes problems? What are they dealing with? Now, for me, when I was on the phone calling leads, that's easier because I can ask them and then they can tell me. But if, if you're not having a one-on-one -on -one conversation, if you're more of an online marketer where we are today, you have to, as Michelle said, understand what they're going through, understand what keeps them up at night, and then address that in your content. So you have to address high stakes problems and then provide a solution. So you might create a piece of content which is how to generate your first lead online and talk about that and do a little video about how you generated your first lead online. You know, Talk about how it's a pain, how everyone needs leads, how you're probably not getting leads and if you're not getting leads you're struggling, here are the reasons why. And then you help them out, you provide some value, here's how I generated a handful of leads and if you'd like to learn more about how you can generate even more leads, here's an, a solution and that's how you monetize that. Right, and so you bring up one of the, the, the critical elements, right? I focus on the five critical elements in my training and of course you're bringing up that first main element which is content. So, you know, when you're talking about providing value, you're talking about attracting people to you, content is that critical aspect, right? Absolutely. Yeah, okay. yeah definitely. Okay, awesome. All right, so let's move on. Um, I'm curious about this. This is a, a question that I, I, I really like to ask because I think it's important. I find that a lot of marketers are spending time doing things that they shouldn't be doing or don't need to be doing and are not leveraging their time most efficiently by focusing on the highest producing, highest leverage um, activities. So we'd love for you guys to share, you know, because you've, you've achieved some incredible success in multiple different income streams, multiple different businesses. Um, what does your day look like? What are the activities that you focus the majority of your time on? What are your money producing activities? So if you look at your week, 80% of your time, what, what are the activities that you're focused on nowadays? I mean, if I just focus on the money-making activities, I could get done in an hour a day. Um, and that basically is email the list, mm -hmm. all right? That's, that's, that's right there, a money-making activity. And email them something of value, so create content. Mm -hmm. So maybe I've created a video or I've created a blog post. So my routine would be get up, you know, create that piece of content, put it on the blog, or put it on Facebook, email the list, get in and create a Facebook ad around it, another money-making activity, and start generating leads with it. That's really, I mean, besides having to check emails, which are a waste of time, that's something, you know, as you grow and get better as a marketer or get, you know, start making more income, you can outsource that kind of stuff, hire a support desk. But we know, and I'll let you chime in on that, but we pretty much know what things are in our own business that are time-sucking activities that we shouldn't be doing, like surfing the newsfeed of Facebook. I mean, we're guilty of it. We do yeah. it also. Cool. You know, I mean, we do. But we, we do know and we understand very much what it is we need to be doing every day. And it, it does partly depend on what business model you have. I mean, if you're a traditional multi-level marketer and you're listening to this or watching this, it might not be about creating content. It might be about you know sharing your presentation you know five times a day. Um, so it really kind of depends. But for us, um, it's it's about creating content. It really is because especially with the way the internet has evolved and, and the way Facebook has evolved, it's a lot more about native advertising. And you can't just necessarily run an ad to a capture page. It's better to run an ad to a blog post. So again, this goes back to to leading with value and providing value. Um, the more content that we can create and then the better off we'll be. So it's all about creating content and then syndicating that content, getting it out there, emailing it to the list, um, you know, running an ad to it, driving traffic to it on Facebook, whatever the case is. But it really, I think the highest leveraged activity is, is creating that content and then emailing it to the list. Yeah, and I can see that that really serves multiple purposes. Um, creating content positions you as an authority, brands you, so it's improving your brand. Um, you're saying, Michelle, that you would set up Facebook ads so then you're able to attract new new visitors or existing visitors, which is lead generation and traffic. And you're also saying that you send that out to your list, which is follow-up and engagement, so staying in touch with your list. So that activity that you just shared, creating, creating content, syndicating it, sharing with your email list, you're literally taking care of three of the main elements, three or four of the main right. elements. Actually, you can take care of all five elements. You know, when I think about it, it's content, lead generation, follow-up, monetization, and traffic. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. And by creating content and doing what you're saying, you're literally taking care of all five critical elements with one activity every single day. I honestly can't think of a higher leverage activity, right? I mean, that's that's the core thing. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, and that was a big shift that I had to make was going from you know getting off the phone and getting more to content creation. You know, yeah. even, when you're, even when you're generating a lot of leads, I can only call X amount of people in a day. There's only so many hours in a day. There's only so many hours where it's even appropriate to call people in a day. And once that's up, it's done. But you create content, and then you know you can drive traffic to it. I mean, if as you know, if that traffic, if it's converting, if if the ROI is there, if the you know earnings per click is there, you can just scale that, and that becomes a very scalable activity. So it becomes even more leveraged when you can scale it because you've dialed in on your, your traffic source and you've got your numbers dialed in too. Absolutely, yeah, you're not limited one-on-one -on -one phone call conversations, exactly. And that's, and that's, I mean, the majority of our listeners here are online marketing focused, so that's, uh, that's extremely relevant for them. Okay, awesome, that is, that's really great advice. Okay, so for those of you listening here to this call, you know exactly what you need to be focused on every single day. All right, so let's let's shift focus here specifically now to traffic and lead generation. Um, right now in your business, how are you um, specifically getting traffic and generating new leads to grow your business uh, right now? What's uh, what's your main strategy? Uh, Facebook. So um, what we do is going back to what he said. We will either he'll do videos or write a blog post. Um, he does them more than I do, but I'll do you know a blog post a week or a video or something, and we will immediately create a clicks to website ad in the Facebook in the Facebook ad manager. We've got our pixels installed on that, and we drive traffic to that post. Now within that piece of content, there's always a strong call to action in there for somebody to opt into something or to buy something. Um, and then the one of the great things we love about using Facebook advertising to drive traffic to our blog post is there's other opportunities on that blog for someone to get to know us better, um, to opt into another you know product that we might be offering. There's plenty of places on there for someone to raise their hand and say, yes, you know, I want more information. So um, that's one of our best strategies right now that I feel like that we're doing in our business. Um, it used to be running straight to a, a capture page, but unfortunately right now with the way Facebook is really cracking down on the people in the home-based industry, it's a little bit more difficult to drive to those capture pages um, because we have to worry about you know, the negative, the relevancy score, and Facebook is, is looking at that. If you have a high negative feedback on that, they're going to shut your ad account down. So it's a little bit safer, a lot, actually a lot more safer to drive traffic to a blog post, but that's really what we're doing to generate most of our leads. Mm -hmm. Okay, awesome. And for uh, for those of, of our premium members, we're actually going to dig into one of your your sales funnels and just kind of have a look at the process that you guys uh, that you guys take. And if some of the things that Michelle just shared about Facebook just went over your head when she started talking about pixels and all that kind of stuff, we'll have a link to one of uh, Michelle's uh, trainings or courses on Facebooks um, on Facebook, and uh, you can get more training on that as well if if uh, Facebook is going to be one of your strategies. All right, let's jump into monetization here. I want to touch on, on really all of the main elements here. Um, monetization, now you already mentioned that right from the beginning you guys had multiple streams of income, different products and services that you were able to offer um, your, your audience or the prospects that you were speaking on the phone to. Let's do this in two parts. First of all, I want to know how many different income streams do you guys have? You know, like do you have two or three main ones? Or do you literally have like half a dozen, a dozen different income streams that are bringing in regular commissions for you? You probably have four main ones that are bringing in a good amount of money. Yeah. And then there's then several ancillary ones. Um, you know, anytime you're using, I mean, like for example, anytime you're using a service like ClickFunnels like Click or, or Aweber or any your autoresponder or anything that that can become an ancillary income stream for you. Um, and that's just you know gravy here and there, some nice commissions, but it's not you don't rely upon that. So I would say four you know main income streams and. You know, at the very, very beginning, when you know Michelle chronologically got into this first, there was just one. It was the, the MLM that she was introduced to, but it was then upon being introduced to My Lead System Pro, and when the more online and affiliate aspect of of marketing became, you know, we were, became aware of. That's when the multiple income streams uh, became created, or we 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 developed the multiple income streams. And I don't want people to be confused and think that we have. 
four main you know, sep yeah, separate business opportunities. We don't have four main separate no, business opportunities one. that we are you know juggling four balls in the air at the same time and hoping that they all work. They're really we're really affiliate marketers now, and so we'll have one really kind of tried and true business main model. business opportunity. But then what our business model is that we have then other maybe affiliate programs or, or options or things that people could, you know, products, services, systems, um, memberships, you know, that we utilize and we're a part of that, that are obviously monetized. Now, you guys also have your own info products. How big of an income, you know, percentage-wise are your products? Do you focus a lot of time and energy on that? Do they make up a large percentage of your revenue? How important is it to create your own products? What do you think? Well, that's that's interesting. You just that you're asking that because I think that a lot of people when they first start out, I know that I did, um, think you've got to create your own products. I mean, because that's where you're going to make all this money. But what people don't realize is just because you create a product, awesome. But how are you going to get traffic? <laughs> right. If you don't have JV partnerships. Right. You know, if you don't have a huge list, or if you don't know how to market that stuff, I mean, you can. I mean, I don't think that I could even go out there right now and just run a Facebook ad to my new Facebook course and get a ton of sales. Now we make a couple of sales a day. We just created this course and we launched it in June, the end of June. Um, and I've only done two JV webinars. Um, it did make you know a good amount of money, but it's not the main source yet. So here you are looking at us. We've been doing this for five years. You make, you know, audience. Yeah, very good money as just affiliates. After going through what you know we went through to set up that course and through the entire launch, and we just did a webinar launch. You know, we didn't do the standard launch with all the videos and all that. I mean, I looked at that and I saw the income that came in from that one night of doing that webinar to the list. I was happy with the money. Most people would be happy, but then I realized how much time I took away Some from our things. main business that makes us way more money. So do having and having your own products. It sounds sexy as hell. It does. Yeah, it does. Right? I mean, Whoa. it's got to do something. It's got to do something for your branding and your positioning and all yeah. that kind of stuff. Right? Absolutely, but you know, it's it's also it's we found it's it's also easier though to leverage an existing system or or leverage you know be an affiliate. It, it's way more lucrative to be a number one affiliate or a top affiliate in a good paying company that pays out well versus having to grind and create all these products and, and launch these products. And as Michelle mentioned, the amount of work, it's also a trade off on work and just your own personal bandwidth with yeah. your capacity to do stuff. And we can we can do get a lot more accomplished and make a lot more money just as affiliates leveraging someone else's company, their, their products, their other hard work, etc. Than trying to create our own thing, then do all the work around it. I mean, because there's a lot of behind the scenes stuff that I think a lot of people don't recognize if you want to really create a product and then launch a product and, and market it and do it well. It's a lot of work, it's a lot of time, it's a lot of effort, it's a lot of energy. And yeah, maybe, and it'll ebb and flow. Maybe you'll get a, a spike because of that launch, you just, oh, we made you know, X amount of dollars from the launch, and whoop de doo, and that's great. But that then tails off. You know the, the 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 flavor of the day of your new product. You know it's like the soup of the day. It's not it's not after a while. There's other things, and so to constantly do that is a lot of work. So we strike a balance, I think quite it, yeah. frankly. Um, and the just our own info product sales does by no means makes up the, the lion's share of our revenue. I'd yeah. say it makes up. I mean, actually, a, a smaller percentage over of our overall revenue. Okay. I think you've got to really have those JV partners, and you've got to know it's got to be your business model. I, I mean, if you're going to create right. products, it's your product. If that is your focus, that is your mm -hmm. business model, and you are out hustling to get traffic and JV partners to get your name out there in that brand. I I love that you said that, Michelle, because it it really is about focus, and it's about you choosing what your business model and your business focus is. You're absolutely right. If you if you want to be a product creator. Um, like I know I was just speaking with Mark Harbert, I'm going to have him on an interview, and he's really focused on creating info products right now. That's his thing. And so he's churning out products, but he, and he's focused on JVs and all that kind of stuff. You guys, on the other hand, are saying, well, geez, we're making a lot more just being affiliates with a lot less work. Doesn't make that much sense, really, to spend that much energy, right? So right. Let's, let's talk about your monetization strategy, and we got to wrap this up here, but really quickly, I want to touch on this because you guys have been very successful. You, you were making really good money as affiliates with different programs. Uh, you were promoting a traditional network marketing company, 
and, and you guys were top recruiters and really, really successful, but then something happened, you guys switched over, um, you guys changed your monetization strategy about a year ago, and you've like doubled, tripled, or quadrupled your yeah. income. What okay. happened there? What was that big shift for, for you guys? And I know that now it makes up the lion's share of your income. Tell me about that. So, yeah, so our monetization strategy is that, so we're, our, our model now is we're more what you consider affiliate marketers, you know, internet online affiliate marketers versus network marketers. And it was because we just, as we became more exposed and more knowledgeable of the just online marketing and all the, just all that there is to that, uh, and we just evolved as as business owners and entrepreneurs. We realized the really recognized and realized the power more of having leverage and scalability. And once we realized, okay, we're able to you know with Facebook ads and, and just the Facebook advertising platform, you can scale something very easily. Again, once once you realize that the earnings per click is there, you've dialed in the traffic you, and the numbers are there, you just got to pump in more money. And you know it's the whole you know. Pay a dollar to get a dollar twenty back, or pay a dollar to get a dollar fifty back, and you can just keep pumping in, pumping in, pumping in, pumping in. And you know, maybe someone would argue this, but that's tough to do with a network marketing company with you know traditional MLM. And so we just evolved. And so our business model now is it's a you know we have a tiered uh, product mix, and you know obviously it starts off usually with a a lower end kind of front end system. That someone can join in, and then it it escalates up from there. And you know that escalation could again it depends upon what they're looking for and what they want. You know if they already have a business opportunity that they love and they're dialed into, we're not going to try to pluck them out of that and plop them into ours. That doesn't make sense. But we'll have various different things, whether it's a product of our own, whether it's a system that we use, whether it's a training program. So we can offer them these things, and and from a income stream and and monetization standpoint. We have various different levels, price points, you know, commitment points, et cetera, that they can you know, work their way up that ladder. And I think the biggest thing for, for me was we could make $10,000 commissions with the same amount of work it took to make a $100 commission. I know wow. that's baffling to a lot of people. They're right. like, I don't see how that works, <laughs> right. but it's true. We work less now in our top tier program than we did when we were hustling to make $100 commissions. Yeah, it, I mean, and for those that don't know, we added in a profit maximizer. Yeah. I mean, and if you're not familiar with that term, you, you can look it up. It's pretty easy. But we, we really never, even when we had multiple income streams a couple of years ago, we never really had a profit maximizer. We never really had something that could make us three grand or five grand or Michelle said a ten grand commission from one person. And so when we added that element into our business model. I mean, you said double, tripled. I mean, it way more. I mean, like quintupled, you know, octupled, whatever, you know, our income because we just didn't have a profit maximizer in place before. So adding that in was what really changed everything from an income standpoint for us. Yeah, and it's it's been interesting to to watch your business develop because I've, I'm I'm a student of marketing. I'm a student of business, and so watching you guys has been such a learning lesson for me. And seeing how you guys have have grown your business, and then watching what happened when you made that one change. And if you look at all of the top online marketers, and I'm speaking specifically about online marketing right now. If you look at all of the top online marketers, and I, I'm talking and, and online marketing trainers and gurus, and I'm talking Fran Kern, Ryan Dice, you know, you name it, Brendan Bouchard, whatever. All of them talk about a profit maximizer, and all it is is a back-end, high-value, high-ticket, high-commission, high-profit um, product or service that you're able to offer to your customers. It's a really simple concept. We, we know that a small, only a small percentage will, will ever take you up on that, but those are your best clients. Those are the best people that you want to work with, and, um, and, and they get more value, and you get more profits. It, it just makes sense to have that in your business. So it's awesome to see what you guys have been able to do over the last year um, and the, the success that you've been able to create. Okay, guys, we are wrapping it up here. We are at 25 minutes. So I want to thank you so much for sharing because in just in this 25 minutes, we've touched on the five critical aspects that you've got to have in your business. We talked about content. We talked about lead generation. We talked about follow-up. We talked about monetization. And we touched a little bit on traffic with Facebook marketing. So I, I, I want the viewers to really see exactly how top producers and rising stars and the marketers that are making it happen right now in their business, 
how they're actually using those five elements in their business. And you guys, I think, very clearly showed us exactly what you're doing. So I'm sure that the viewers got a ton of value. Um, for those of you that want to learn more from Bill and Michelle, we're going to leave some links down here below to uh, some of their products and services so you can learn more about them and, uh, and learn from them with some of the great courses and training that they have. Do you guys want to leave our audience with one last final uh, tip for anybody that's in this game and, and just looking to take their business to the next level right now? Yeah, I think, you know, um, mentorship is very important. And uh, for me, I know there's going to be some people that are going to disagree, but paid advertising. You want to build it fast. <laughs> you want to get results mm -hmm. immediately. Consider and, you know, go in and start doing some paid advertising. Too many people out there are just chasing around and, you know, running around in circles and not willing to put in the effort and the money to invest in themselves and their business. And it really needs to be done. That's, that's been the biggest difference for us in our business. Yeah, and I would say in addition to that, you know, stop hiding. Stop hiding behind your computer or, or being shy. I mean, if you want to, if you want to do this, do it. You know, start creating content, shoot the video, write the blog post. Just get over yourself. I know we all have insecurities. It, it's never going to be perfect. No. You know, just do it. Just suck it up and and create something. You you have to create within this. You know, entrepreneurs are creating something. You have to produce. You have to create. And you know, just. Stop getting in your own way. Get out of your own way and just, you know, just do it. You know, just suck it up and do it. Get over yourself and realize that if you really, truly want to to build a business and and, and provide some value and and turn a profit, you're gonna have to get out yeah. there. People are gonna have to find you. They have to see you. They're gonna have to get to know you. You'll have to build that know, like, and trust factor. And the the best way to do that is to start creating content. I love it. I, there, you you couldn't give better advice. You really couldn't. I because I I see the marketers that actually take that advice bill and actually get out there and start creating content it, it, they they always succeed it's the ones that are not doing it they're they've got the reasons they've got the excuses they've got the fear whatever it is and it's stopping them from just getting out there and like you said creating that's what we are we're entrepreneurs we need to be out there creating and, and bringing value into the marketplace bill yeah. michelle you guys are awesome thank you so much uh... for being guests on the show here and providing the incredible value that you do every single day with all the people, all the lives that you've touched all around the world. And uh, I looked forward to uh, having you guys back on here and, and doing some more training with you guys. So thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Absolutely. Thanks for having us. This was really fun. I hope you enjoyed this week's Playmaker session. If you love the session, subscribe now to our YouTube channel so you never miss our weekly episodes. Be sure to also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes. Just type in online playmakers in the search bar and click subscribe and be sure to leave a five-star review. All of the episodes, show notes, transcripts, resources, and bonuses are available on the blog over at onlineprofitplaybook.com along with several bonus free tutorials I've created for you as well. Your fast track to results is to follow the playmakers. You can download their closely guarded playbooks and follow them step by step to grow your influence, build your audience, and create results in your business right now. Head over to onlineprofitplaybook.com and join the playmakers to get full access today. Thank you again for joining us today and be sure to tune in next week as we bring you another power-packed session with the top playmakers online. This is Norbert Orlowitz signing off.